Hi everyone. In this quick tip, I'll show you how to use shaft and holder in 3D toolpaths to avoid collisions on the first generation. I want to add a finish pass for the drafted walls of this part. I could easily create a toolpath that just uses a really long tool that will reach all the way to the bottom. The longer tools can shatter and leave a subpar surface finish. So to use a short tool as much as possible, I'll duplicate this toolpath and select a shorter tool. This tool definitely wouldn't be able to make it to the bottom of the part without a collision. But when I enable shaft and holder, HSMWorks will only generate toolpath based on clearance values for the selected tool. The resulting toolpath doesn't go all the way down the part, but respects the clearances I defined and allows me to use a shorter tool with better cut conditions. To finish the rest of the part, I'll need that longer tool. So I'll duplicate this operation using the Control D shortcut, switch to the longer tool, and then enable rest machining from the previous contour operation. This will generate a collision-free toolpath that only targets areas the short tool couldn't reach. I'll simulate those toolpaths together, and from the stock results, it looks like they work together to finish the entire part. One last way to machine this part using the shorter tool is to enable multi-axis tilting. I'll duplicate the original toolpath, note that shaft and holder is still enabled, and then switch to the Passes tab, where I'll enable multi-axis tilting. The first parameter defines the allowable tool tilt, so make sure your machine is capable of the entered tilt. The resultant toolpath keeps the tool vertical for as long as possible, adding a tilt when the shaft and holder clearances would have been violated. One note on using shaft and holder is that it is only beneficial if your tools and holders are modeled as accurately as possible. Discrepancies could result in collisions, so make sure your HSMWorks tools and holders match what's in your machine. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful, and let us know some of your best 3D toolpath tips and tricks in the comments. Thanks for watching.